We can do this for one pair of chromosomes at a time. Well, hi there. I'm assuming if you've made it this far that you are very nearly a master of genetics. If not, you should watch our first three videos about becoming a master of genetics. In fact, we'll put them all together in a playlist right there. So just go ahead and click on that, watch them through, and we'll catch you in a minute. Since you're still here, you're probably waiting for the answers to the questions you've been working on since our last video. Piebald is a recessive trait in ball pythons. If a heterozygous for piebald female breeds with a male that is also heterozygous for the piebald allele, what are the possible genotypes of the offspring they can produce? For each zygote, what are the odds of each possible genotype? What are the phenotypes coded for by those genotypes? For each zygote, what are the odds of each possible phenotype? We would begin by creating a matrix like this. We can see that both individuals are heterozygous. And the piebald allele is represented by a lowercase letter because piebald is recessive to the wild type allele. I picked the letter B, but any letter would work. When we fill in our matrix, we see that for each zygote, we get the following possibilities. Since one of the four possibilities is homozygous wild type, each zygote has a one-fourth chance of being homozygous for the wild-type allele. Two of the four possibilities are heterozygous. So each zygote has a one-half, two-fourths, chance of being a heterozygote. One of the four possibilities is homozygous piebald. Therefore, each zygote has a one-fourth chance of being homozygous for the piebald allele. Those are the genotypic odds, the genotypic ratios. But if you don't have a way to see the actual genes that your babies have, the only way to tell what their genotypes are will be by looking at their phenotypes. Each egg, each zygote, has a one-fourth chance of being homozygous for the piebald allele, and therefore having a piebald phenotype. The remaining three-fourths will have a wild-type phenotype because they're not homozygous for the piebald allele. Because the trait is recessive, it will be impossible to tell if the babies carry the piebald allele or not just by looking at them. If we look back at our matrix, we will notice that there are three ways to get a wild-type baby from this cross. We also notice that two of those three ways still carry the piebald allele. Because two-thirds can be represented by the percentage 66.666666 repeating, you will often see babies from crosses of two heterozygous parents being referred to as 66% poshets. Poshet being short for possibility of being heterozygous. The truth is that they're either hets or they're not, but without breeding them, all you know for sure is that they've got a 66% chance of being hets. Babies that are the offspring of a parent that show the recessive trait in their phenotype, but that do not show it themselves, are always hets. They aren't called poshets because it is impossible for them not to be hets. The reason for this is because an animal that shows a recessive trait in its phenotype must be a homozygote. Because it is a homozygote, it can only make one kind of gamete. It must pass the recessive allele to every one of its offspring. Therefore, the offspring of two piebalds, for example, will always be homozygous because their parents had nothing else to give them. If you breed a 100% het animal or a het animal, to an animal that isn't het, the babies are 50% pos hets. Again, they're either hets or they're not, but we can't know one way or the other without breeding them. Since the heterozygous parent only has one copy of the allele, it only passes it on to half of its offspring on average. The babies, therefore, have a 50% chance of being heterozygous. If any of the offspring of a pos het show the recessive phenotype, we will know that that parent was a het. That is called proving it out. The best way to prove something out is to breed it with a known homozygote. Now for the second question. Leopard is a dominant trait in ball pythons. Leopard is not allelic with piebald. If a male that is heterozygous for leopard and heterozygous for pied breeds with a female that is heterozygous for pied, what are the odds that the babies will show leopard in their phenotype? What are the odds that they will show the piebald phenotype? 
To answer this question, we need to make two separate matrices. We need to make one for the piebald trait, and because they're not allelic, we need to make a second for the leopard trait. Our matrix for the piebald trait should look exactly like the one that we made for the last problem, because again, they're both heterozygous. Thus, when filled out, it should look like this. The odds will be exactly the same as what we found before. To answer our question, each egg will have a one-fourth chance of showing the piebald trait. The matrix for the leopard trait should look something like this. And again, the exact letter that you choose is totally arbitrary. I could even simplify it further to look like this, because the female can only make one kind of gamete. Filled out, we would get this. We can see that for each egg, or each zygote, we have a one-half chance of producing a heterozygous baby that has the leopard phenotype, and a one-half chance of producing a homozygous recessive baby that has the wild-type phenotype. To answer the question, each egg has a one-half or 50% chance of being a leopard. But what if I want to know the odds of getting a leopard pied? One way would be to multiply the odds of getting a leopard by the odds of getting a pied. However, in my experience, most people just mess this up. So we are going to learn a better way. This better way doesn't require math. It only requires us to remember that when we make these matrices, we're figuring out all of the kinds of gametes that each parent can make. We can do this for one pair of chromosomes at a time, or, as in this case, more than one. In the case of our two snakes, we have a male that is heterozygous, big L, little l, for the leopard allele, and big B, little b, for the piebald allele. He's heterozygous for both genes. We need to remember that for each chromosome pair, he can give one allele or the other, but not both, to any one of his offspring. So for the first chromosome, the one containing the leopard allele, he can pass on either the dominant big L allele or the recessive little l allele. The process of meiosis does not know or care if the allele is dominant or recessive, so both are equally likely to make it into the sperm. Thus, he can make big L or little l sperm. The second chromosome, the one containing the piebald allele, works the same way. He can give either the big B or the little b allele to each sperm, and thus to each potential offspring. Because the leopard and piebald genes are contained on different chromosomes, they will be sorted separately. Thus, a big L is equally likely to be paired with a big B or a little b. And a little l is also equally likely to be paired with a big B or a little b. The fact that they sort independently is called independent assortment. This male can produce big L big B, big L little b, little L big B, or little L little b sperm. Our female is also heterozygous for the piebald allele, but she's homozygous recessive for the leopard allele. As a result, she can only make two kinds of eggs. She can make either little L big B eggs or little l, little b eggs. After we figure out the possible gametes that each parent can make, we make a matrix, just like before. And remember to draw the little tails. The resultant matrix should look like this. When we fill it out, it's easiest if we keep the letters that are allelic together. It'll make the next step much easier. And it should look something like this. As you can see, we have eight different possibilities here. Of the eight, only one is heterozygous for the leopard and homozygous wild type for the piebald allele, which means it doesn't carry the piebald allele at all. Two of the eight are heterozygous for leopard and heterozygous for piebald. One of the eight is heterozygous for leopard and homozygous piebald. One of the eight is homozygous wild type for the leopard allele, meaning it doesn't have the leopard allele, and homozygous wild type for the piebald allele, so it doesn't carry the piebald allele either. Two of the eight our homozygous wild type for the leopard allele doesn't carry the leopard allele at all, and heterozygous for piebald. And one of the eight is homozygous wild type, doesn't carry the leopard allele, and homozygous for the piebald allele. Thus our cross results in these six different genotypes with the per zygote probabilities listed next to them. Of all those possibilities, only one has the phenotype that we're looking for, leopard pied, which has the probability of one in eight. So to answer our question, we have a one-eighth chance of getting a leopard pied for each zygote produced by this pairing. To review, 
Offspring that have a parent showing the recessive phenotype must receive a copy of the recessive allele. If they don't show the recessive phenotype, then they are 100% hets. Offspring of two 100% hets that do not show the recessive phenotype have a two-thirds chance, a 66% chance, of being hets themselves. Thus, we call them 66% pos hets. Offspring of one het or pos het parent will have one half the probability of being a het that their het or pos het parent had of being a het. When determining the probabilities for offspring from multi-gene crosses, you must figure out what the genotypes are of both of the parents and all the types of gametes, sperm and egg, that each parent can make. You can find all the possible combinations using a matrix. The odds are always per zygote and are not increased or decreased by what happens with the other zygotes. Now for the final questions, and since this is the last video, go ahead and put your answers down in the comments. Albino is recessive, and pastel is incomplete dominant, meaning that as a homozygote we can get a super pastel. The two alleles are not on the same chromosome, meaning they're not allelic. If you breed a female that is heterozygous for pastel and heterozygous for albino, with a male that is homozygous, super, for pastel and heterozygous for albino, what is the probability of producing a homozygous, super pastel, that is also albino? What is the likelihood that a not albino baby from this cross is actually heterozygous for the albino allele? When the babies from the previous cross hatched, some of them were also piebalds. From this, we learned that both parents are also heterozygous for pied. What is the probability per egg of hatching a baby that is a super homozygous pastel, albino, and pied? If you can answer this last question, there isn't anything you can't do. You are a master of genetics. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this whole series. I hope it's been helpful for you. I hope you're able to answer these questions. Please feel free to ask questions down in the comments, help out other people that are trying to figure this all out because now you've got all the pieces of the puzzle. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. I like how that ball python there is like right on your elbow so you have to like keep it elevated. Yeah, well, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clint's uh, living the dream over there. <laughs> Alright. We can do this for one pair of chromosomes at a time. Bloopers! Yes. Yuck. <laughs> well, Holy cow. just keeps coming. <laughs> I hope this is rolling. Is this rolling? It's rolling. It's rolling. Man, he just keeps pooping. Come here, Lauren. Okay. He did it perfectly where it didn't get on me, so we're friends. I would much rather grab a snake poop than even the poop of myself or someone I love. We should put that straight. I'm just so grateful that wasn't on me. Mm. It didn't, not on me at all. Like, what a thoughtful snake. That was very thoughtful of you, snake. I've, re I've realized recently, I've been bit three times by snakes. Two of them while presenting the snake. Oh. And it's because I'm not looking at the snake, yeah, I'm looking at so. something else. When I watch the snake, I don't get bit. Totally. Those ding dang tails. It's ding dang tails! That their het or pos het parent had of being het. <laughs> <laughs> How many hets did the het get het? Or the het did the het the het? <laughs> Mr. Pooper. Yeah, but he's done with that now, so we're good to go. There's a smiley face. Oh. <laughs> and he's got my initials. Clint Laidlaw. Oh nice. my gosh. Isn't that That's rad? So cool. Meant to be.